This tiny stick reshaped civilization. Not fire itself, but who controlled it. Before matches, starting a fire took skill, tools, patience, or luck. Flint and steels, tinder, burning glass, and if it rained, forget it. Then came the friction match. Suddenly, anyone, anywhere, could make fire instantly. That sounds small, but it rewired industry, medicine, cooking, safety, and even labor politics. Because this isn't just the story of fire, it's the story of accidental chemistry, toxic factories, global monopolies, and the workers who risked everything to fix a deadly invention. And it begins 1400 years before anyone ever fought to light a match. In the year 577, during a chaotic war in northern China, palace women used sulfur-dipped sticks to start fires. They were called fire-inch sticks. They were tiny and they worked but you still needed an existing flame to ignite them. So for a thousand more years, the world kept lighting fires the hard way. Jump to the 1600s, Europe becomes obsessed with alchemy, trying to turn base materials into gold. One alchemist boils gallons of urine. He's searching for gold, but accidentally discovers something far stranger. A material that glows in the dark and bursts into flame on contact with air. Phosphorus. Scientists began experimenting. They start mixing phosphorus with sulfur, sugar, and powdered glass. Anything to create instant fire. Humanity was inching towards the first true match, but the journey would get much weirder and far more dangerous. In 1805, a French chemist created a match that lights itself. All you have to do is dip the match into a bottle of liquid sulfuric acid. Yes, the first match required an acid bottle in your pocket. It was dangerous, expensive, and occasionally exploded, so unsurprisingly, it didn't go mainstream. Then, in 1826, everything changes, completely by accident. John Walker, a chemist in England, was mixing chemicals in his shop. He wipes a stick on the floor to clean it, and it ignites. He had just invented the first friction match. No acid bottle, no magic, just strike, fire, done. He sells the matches with a small piece of sandpaper to ignite them. But here's the thing, he never patents it. Another entrepreneur copies the idea, markets it better, and becomes rich. Within a few years, millions of matches are being produced every day. People call them lucifers, light bringers. For the first time in history, fire belonged to everyone. You didn't need skills or tools, just a box. But lucifers had a problem, actually several horrifying problems. Early matches were unbelievably dangerous. They ignited explosively, they sprayed sparks, they set homes and clothing on fire. Germany and France even banned them for a time. But that wasn't the worst part. To make matches ignite easily, manufacturers began using white phosphorus. It works amazingly well on the match head. But inside match factories, mostly staffed by young women and girls, workers inhale phosphorus dust for hours every day. It's stuck to hair, skin, clothing. Workers' mouths glowed green in the dark. Their teeth began to wake, then rot, then fall out. Their jawbones literally crumbled. The smell alone could identify victims. The condition became known as fossy jaw, and one box of matches held enough toxin to kill a person. Matches helped build modern life, and they were destroying the people who made them. And then something unexpected happens. In London in 1888, a group of match factory workers, teenage girls mostly, go on strike. They refuse to keep working with toxic phosphorus. They organize, they protest, they made national headlines. Public pressure grows. Governments begin banning white phosphorus. Factories are forced to switch to safer materials. And this leads to one of the most important innovations in everyday life, the safety match. The safety match solves the problem by keeping chemicals separate until the moment of striking. The match head held oxidizer and fuel. The striking strip, that red band on the box, held red phosphorus and grit. Only when the two met did fire happen. A change in chemistry, a change in design, decades of suffering ended. By 1900, one company controlled a global match empire. Factories across continents, billions of matchboxes a year. Matches become essential, in kitchens, in factories, on railways, in early cars, in every emergency kit. And even as technology evolved, gas lighters, electric stoves, induction cooktops, matches refused to disappear. Today we have stormproof matches used by survivalists and rescue teams. 
They burn underwater. They relight after being submerged. Some burn so hot they can ignite wet wood. The match continues to evolve because fire never stopped being essential. Think about what this little stick represents. For thousands of years, fire was rare, sacred, controlled by knowledge or privilege. Then the match arrived and fire belonged to everyone. A flame in your pockets, a spark on demand. The match didn't invent fire, it invented access to fire. And sometimes the spark that changes the world is smaller than you think. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.